Still hedge fund managers making a million dollars an hour. You know, it's crazy, right? It's money everywhere. It's money in everything. I want to help you. Start your business today. Come join my royal family. Subscribe to Casino is the name. Hey, yo, what's going on right now? You watching Casino is the name? Man, I had a crazy night last night. So, last night, I ended up in the ER at the Department of Veteran Affairs um, Hospital in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay, so it's nothing major going on. At least I hope not. But I have had some shoulder pain, um, so I wanted to go in and get some X-rays. And uh, I tried to make an appointment to see my PCM, but you know uh, they were saying that it's going to be at least a week before I can get in, and that I should just go ahead and like maybe go to the ER or something like that. It's still bothering me. So two days in, I was still having issues with my shoulder, which I still am. And um, so I was like, well, let me just go ahead and get some x-rays and uh, maybe get some pain meds so, you know, I can at least get some rest or whatever. So I go in and when I go, you know, I was expecting the long wait for the to be seen at a, at a, at a ER. You know what I'm saying? It's always going to be that kind of wait. And so I decided not to go to like Emory because I didn't set in some of Emory like, you know, waiting um, areas for a while when I used to go with my dad. And I was like, yeah, I think I'd be better off just going to the VA. Shouldn't be as many people because it's, you know, you have to be a veteran to even get treatment. That's less than 1% of the population. So I'm thinking, okay, I'd be good. I go down there and, you know, it's few people in there i've seen way more emory but few people in there so i go in i tell them you know i'm here for some shoulder pain they say yo we're gonna fast track you whatever so i'm expecting to get in and kind of get out you know i just need some x-rays y'all do these x-rays then i can leave y'all don't even have to give me the meds right now y'all can put them in or call me and let me know later i just need to get this looked at so that somebody can tell me if it's something serious or it's just something that's gonna pass over time so um you know, I go in and, you know, it's few people. The lady tells me, you know, um, you know, sit over there and, you know, we're going to call you when it's time. So I'm in there and a lot of people was already talking like, man, I've been here a long time. And this one particular lady, don't know this lady name, don't know this lady name, but this one particular lady, she was like, just talkative, you know, just walking around asking people like, you know how long you know how long they've been waiting and you know and she hopes that you know everybody gets seen she's just real talkative anyway there's this old guy who's sitting right in front of me right you know six feet six feet but this guy sitting in front of me in a wheelchair and he's wrapped in a blanket you know he's just looking around he's saying nothing or whatever uh, and the lady, she goes over and she speaks to him and she says, sir, how long have you been here? Cause she came, I guess, right before me or whatever. So I was like the newest person in the room, but they already told me I was fast track. A lot of these people, like they needed much more serious things. So I was just in for the shoulder. So she, um, she asked him how long he's been there. And he said, oh, now mind you, it's about 1 30 AM. Okay. I've been here at least two hours myself at this point or an hour or two. So, uh, she asked him how long he's been there, you know, and he says, oh, I've been here since about 1030 this morning. Okay. Remember what I said? It's about 130 AM the next morning, right? So he's been here since 1030 AM. And we're all like, the whole room is like, what? You've been here? Since yesterday, like, you know, like, you know, we always, you know, if we got there at midnight, I mean, 11 o'clock p.m., then, yeah, we've been there since yesterday. But you got here yesterday morning. What? The wait can't be seriously that long, right? So the lady's like, well, let me, wait, uh, would you like, sir, would you like for me to go ask them, like, what's taking so long with you? And he said, please. He said, you know, they took my labs, they did something else, and they put me back out here, right? So... He said, I'm waiting. Nobody told me anything. Nobody discharged me. Nobody did any of that kind of stuff. So I'm still just waiting to find out what's going on. So after that, um, you know, I'm just like, 
maybe maybe you know he has somebody here with him or maybe they know he's out here and for whatever reason you know he just kind of out here he said he said yeah they told me they didn't have any beds for me so they just you know put me over here and i just been sitting here you know i guess he can go to the restroom and get assistance to go to the restroom here and there but he said nobody has told me anything so he's been sitting there for well over 12 hours and so we're like what so the lady goes she, she asked him hey you mind if i go ask these people like ask the people about you you know and then he was like yeah please please do so he goes and he asks um you know he get, she gets his name and she goes and asks you know why you know how, how long it's gonna take and they're like we don't know anything about him right and so they're like sir we don't even know did you check in? And he was like, yeah, I checked in. They took my labs. They did this. And they told me to wait right here. And somebody's gone. And he was like, nothing, nothing happened. Right. And so it was like, I don't know if like, was he actually, cause he's an older guy. So it's like, did you actually get seen by anybody? Cause they're like, we don't even see him. And so, so, um, the lady comes back and like, yeah, they're telling me that I can't even speak to you know they were doing the hippo thing they did a hippo thing right they came and they spoke to him directly but they were basically like telling the lady you know if you're not family or whatever that next to can kind of thing or whatever like we can't really tell you anything you're not you're just another veteran patient or whatever we can't be telling you his business so anyway they come over they get his name and they're like yo you're not even in the system they must have i guess discharged you or whatever it was um because his stuff was basically closed out. So this guy's been sitting there and he, he probably, they probably closed it out because they didn't know where he was at or, or something. I don't know, but they closed his stuff out. And so all of this is developing in front of all of us, right? All the veterans is like, what in the world is happening in here? Right? Because they forgot about this guy. Like we still want to give you the benefit of the doubt. We don't want to say you just got forgot about, but um, the guy is sitting there and you know, we're like, come on, somebody should have known. Like, nobody came periodically to just ask and just, you know, ask what people are here for every, say, hour and just get a gauge on things or something. And so, we, you know, everybody was just saying, like, man, you know, nobody came and checked and asked, you know, what are you here for? Are you still seeking treatment? Like, you know, how long have you been here? Just to get a gauge. Maybe they have gone away from doing that kind of thing because I think they used to do that kind of stuff maybe at different VAs or this VA I can't even remember but it was just crazy because you know this guy's wrapped in this blanket and he's sitting there he's you know kind of mobilized you know he's in a wheelchair and he's just like yeah man you know uh, they, they got my labs um they I think they did some kind of scan on him and they told him they was gonna come back and they were waiting on a bed and no they never got a bed for him so what is that like is that normal practice but then the new shift that's on maybe the third second shift that's came on since the first shift left maybe uh they don't know anything about him like, so he was not even um you know in the in the queue to being seen so then they had to put him back in which put him to the back of the line and it was like why don't you like he's here he's been here before all of us it was like yeah so they had to put him back in and they had to put him back in again behind all of us. So he was even behind me. Now I was fast track, right? So they were saying, you know, I had maybe, so after I saw that, right? And I had been there a couple of hours, um, you know, cause I still sat and it just, you know, all of this is developing, right? So I still sat for a while, maybe another hour or so. And so I get up and I go say, Hey, um, so how long before, you know, you guys actually get a chance to see me from my, you know, my shoulder or whatever, you know, and I'm not trying to be picky, you know what I'm saying? Cause I see people been here six hours, right? So, you know, like, yeah, they told me I was fast track, you know, I don't really know what that means. And she was like, well, you're going to be in and out before most of them. And that, you know, it's going to be, you have four people ahead of you. Cause I was like, should I just go ahead and leave? if it's going to be like a long, long time, because maybe I should just go to immediate care, urgent care or something like that. And she said, no, you probably be better off just waiting. Right. You got four people ahead of you on the fast track side. Right. So I'm like, okay. 
So I go sit back down against my better judgment, you know, because I'm seeing how this thing is playing out. So I go sit down and I say, okay, I'm going to wait maybe 45 minutes and, you know, whatever. So I start watching videos on my phone. Then uh, <laughs> really I, I went past 45 minutes. I'm like an hour and 15 minutes and I get back up and I say, oh, look. Um, you know, I went past my 45 minute mark. Hopefully there's going to get these people in and out. So I go back up there to the lady and I say, Hey, so, um, you know, uh, how, where, where am I now? Like, you know, am I next up, you know, whatever, or are they about to call me like right now? Like I haven't really seen, but one or two people move around, but I don't know what category, I don't know if those are fast track people or just regular, whatever. So she said, how many people did I tell you before? I said, uh, you said it was four people ahead of me. And she said, okay, now it's three people ahead of you. And I was like, so we're going about an hour per person. And I still had three more people ahead of me. So I was like, whoa. And she was telling me I should just stick around and wait for that. I was like, nah. So, wow, that was a lot. Cause then you still have to be go through your process. So I ended up getting home about three thirty in the morning or three three thirty in the morning, crazy, and um, I had been there for hours and hours, and I still was at least about three hours away. And I don't know, and you know, just to see that they misplaced somebody or they somebody fell out of their system and got put back to the back of the line. He's been there since 10 a.m. It's a crazy system. I don't know what to do, but Atlanta VA emergency room especially has got to do better. Who knows what could happen to somebody while they're sitting and just waiting for, you know, that kind of situation, like an emergency. Like, how did somebody slip out of a system and end up waiting since 10.30 a.m. And it's 3 o'clock in the morning, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. They still haven't been seen the next day. That's crazy. Send in a wheelchair. Anyway, right now you're watching Casino is the Name, man. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, man. Yeah. Hey, yo, what's going on right now? You're watching Casino is the Name. And if you wanted to know how I started my trucking business, I have an ebook called Big Shot, Hot Shot, Volume 1, Own Your Trucking Authority. It's a great book, five-star reviews. The link will be in the description below. Go get that. Me and her together, we just count it up Money on my mind, I can't get enough Don't play with my money, you don't want no beef Cause I come from the bottom, I come from the street When she first saw me, she said, who is that? When a man saw me, he called me a threat I'm the one that really live, what a rap They ain't never get it, they ain't really trapped Say you want to be successful, but what's stopping you? Can't nothing stop you from being successful except for you. You standing in your own way. I came from the bottom. I ain't know nothing but the grind. You can't tell me nothing about that. I caught the bus at Basic Street Projects in Tallahassee, Florida. You hear me? I used to think a million dollars would last me my whole life. I'd have made that and spent that. A million dollars ain't enough. There are hedge fund managers making a million dollars an hour. You know, it's crazy, right? It's money everywhere. It's money in everything. I want to help you. Start your business today. Come join my royal family.
Subscribe to Casino is the name.